Hey guys, how's it going Ownership and welcome to a new iRacing video, a new series on the channel as well. In this series we'll be reviewing or at least showing the highlights from the AOR Apex Online Racing iRacing League that has been taking place in the first season of the 2017 iRacing calendar. That means that it also follows the um, calendar of the 2017 season 1 season at iRacing. Um, people who are driving on iRacing will know what I'm talking about. This is the car that we're going to do it in, the Formula Renault. And after uh, Formula Sim Racing and mainly after R, um, R Factor 2, we make the jump to iRacing and see what we can do there. The calendar is on your screen right now. This is then also the official uh, 2017 iRacing season. Basically, you have AOR as a league and at the same time iRacing runs their schedule as well where you can race in. Um, the point scoring system, we have a feature race and a sprint race where you can earn bonus points for stuff like fastest laps, pole position and having a clean race, so without any incident points or off tracks. I'll get to that though a little bit later while we get, uh, while we get going. Obviously in the feature race you can score more points than in a sprint race. That was a brief explanation. I'm sure that many more things will be cleared up while we get this series going. It does take a little bit of time probably for you, the viewers, to adjust and simply see how it goes in this, uh, in this league. I'll try to tell you a bit along the way. First round of the season was at Watkins Glen, which is underway right now. Silvasti, we are on board with now qualified in second. We immediately in the first round of the season put it up in pole position. So that is a very good sign. Watkins Glen though is, um, is known for it's very very long straights basically especially the straight we're coming on to right now so Sylvasti in second didn't necessarily have a, have a disadvantage and immediately he's right on our table here going to try and make a move now Sylvasti is very very experienced in these cars or in this car rather um, he has driven the Formula Renault 2.0 quite a bit and obviously I have a, a, a few people that I know from Formula Sim Racing who are active in, in iRacing um, and they said that uh, Zulvasti would be uh, a very tough uh, challenge for me, a very tough competitor for me, that's the word I'm looking for. So beating him is most likely going to be insanely difficult and coming into this race I honestly did not expect to compete for a championship at all. However, putting in pole position straight away obviously gives a little bit of a, of, of a boost uh, to your morale, but in the race you know, you're immediately being passed by uh, Silvasti and in lap 2 he has created a slight bit of a gap. Now one thing which I have to mention, if you look at the steering wheel, it's in reverse at the moment. That's because I did not save the replay of this race. I had to um, ask, uh, I think it was Phil Reed who was also racing here, uh, for a replay which he kindly sent to me. So thanks uh, to Phil Reed for that. But uh, unless you save the replay yourself, you don't see the information, so to say, on the wheel. And the steering is also a little bit off, that's what I mean. Uh, it sometimes looks a little bit dodgy. Excuse me for that, but it's only going to get better as, um, as, as, I, as we go on. Because in that case I do remember to save the replays before I quit the uh, session. Uh, replay of the start then, very cold ties in the opening laps. That's something you'll always see in this series. The opening laps um, are usually a little bit squiggly. You start with uh, cold tires and especially when the, te the, the, the temperature is cold as well. Um, it can sometimes get a little bit tricky up to lap 7 though and you can see the kind of gap that Silvasti has created and well you have to be honest right now with yourself he is much faster than you are at the moment but at the same time this is my first competitive iRacing race so to say in a league I wasn't too too you know what is the word I wasn't too uh, disappointed by it to be honest and uh, after the first couple of laps I got more and more into a flow, into a rhythm and you can see by the start of lap 14 I'm suddenly in the picture again. We are on board with Uni Sovasti looking uh, back at us and we have closed that gap down and the advantage of closing that gap down is is that you get now a huge draft advantage down this straight here uh, at Watkins Glen. Um, the slipstream is obviously massive, the advantage you get is absolutely massive especially around a track like this and at the end of lap 14 you can see it here I was getting more and more in the, into the picture, more and more confident with the car and this is a good start of the season. Um, this is only the first round, my first experience really. I must say that I practice quite a bit for this round, uh, I'm not gonna lie. If I start a season, uh, I do want to be competitive. I'm not gonna start a season and drive in and, and, and well, be happy enough with, with P10, let's put it like that. I do want to win, that's, that's my nature, that's my character. Even though we're in iRacing, even though this is a completely different experience, you do, 
you always want to win. And um, that attitude that I had was colliding a little bit with the attitude that most people have in AOR. Um, let's talk about it later though, as it seems like we could make ourselves up for a move. I think this is lap 15. Um, now one thing that I should mention, the feature race is 45 minutes long and the sprint race is 25 minutes long? I think that's right. Um, so lap 15 here, we're obviously not, uh, not done, uh, but um, when we make our pit stop, you'll see how much time we have left. Because usually when you make your pit stop, you've got 15 minutes to go in the, in the, in the feature race. Um, you can take 20 liters with you, that's not enough to do uh, 45 minutes of driving and therefore you make your pit stop at around 15 minutes to go in the session. Lap 16 though, we're getting closer and closer to Uni, putting more and more pressure on him. Now you need a good exit out of the uh, first corner and in that case you can stick with him, use the draft and then hopefully get by him. What I wanted to say though is it seems like we does get by him here. What I wanted to say though, uh, coming from FSR I had an um, incredible incredibly competitive mindset mindset you have raced with uh, well you have raced in the FSR World Championship for roughly a year maybe a little bit longer since I did a few WC races World Championship races in FSR in 2015 as well and your mindset is just incredibly competitive you, you want to win that's that's si that's simply it um, but in AOR uh, as we make our pit stops here in AOR the people are a little bit more calm they want to have fun obviously it's not like I don't want to have fun not at all but to be fair winning makes for me driving fun and well that's not the mindset everyone shares in AOR and that collided a little bit um, I'm a very serious person who takes racing very serious and there are people in, in AOR for example who are having a bit of fun and, and crash each other out on purpose for example you know and if I see that I'm like come on man you know be serious but I can't expect that from these people I'll come back to that though in a second we have just made our pit stop Silvasti immediately on our tails it's actually a very good race as we come up to the uh, double chicane I, I would like to call it and we're still side by side over here so a fantastic battle is developing here still side by side on the exit as well plenty of space being given by both of us that's good racing on the inside here I think we're going, we're going to get it Silvasti around the outside that's indeed not gonna happen he has to travel a longer distance so we stay ahead of him for the moment but we know that's well, roughly 50 minutes to go in this session and um, obviously time is running out here and there a little bit as well but as long as Silvasti can stay with us he can most likely overtake us again as well because the draft is a huge plus here it's a huge bonus to have and again Silvasti using the draft as well to get alongside he's gonna have to do it around the outside here again I need to leave plenty of space on the apex, on the apex and on the exit which I do and the next corner is most likely Silvasti's corner because around the outside there that's very very hard I do try it but to be honest it's uh, it's very tricky to do that that corner though we just went through throughout the entire race I still remember it I've already finished this season I um, oh, we have already finished the season yesterday I'm doing uh, the commentary here after the season is already finished and this is the first round so what I'll try to do in this uh, as we have a look at the replay what I'll try to do in this in this series is try to relieve the feelings that I got uh, relive the feelings that I got um, over the course of the season and that's gonna be massive uh, for the championship because um, again at this stage of the championship I was uh, having an incredibly competitive mindset and if I saw people um, trolling around for example in the practice session I would be like you know what you know come on you know what are you doing this is some serious racing but the people in AOR at least most people in AOR don't see it like that lap 19 though I've kept up with uni that means again we're going to get a draft so that story is basically going on all the time uh, as we indeed get by again but uh, it was not easy to adjust to this league but one thing you can do is come into this league and expect people to adjust to your attitude that is something you absolutely cannot do but FSR was such a serious league and with all respect to AOR AOR is more of a yeah, it is a league but it's also more of a community where people are you know very uh, are friendly with each other are very uh, well, they're, they're out to have a good time that's their main goal uh, let's put it like that I think that's the best description if, 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 if I'm wrong then please correct me um, but I came from a league where you 
have to have a competitive mindset in order to win and winning makes fun again so well, let, let's close it off it was hard to adjust let's put it like that and there were a few people who did not like the approach that I had and I can completely understand that looking back at it right now at the time you know I was still trying to adjust and I had a pretty tough time I'm not gonna lie coming to the end of this race though we're gonna have to make a pause on the uh, Silvasti quite soon you basically have to time your overtake right here. Silvasti has, has made a mistake. We have somewhat, you know, forced him into a mistake there probably into the double chicane as I would still like to call it. I know it has a name, but I, I, I can't think of the name at the moment, so uh, apologies about that. Um, so we take back the lead. To be honest, this has been quite a fascinating race. Again, we have a look at the replay. Uh, yeah, you know, making a little bit of a move to the inside, then jumping back to the outside. Silvasti goes too deep into here. And again, we can uh, pass him. So, so far, Silvasti and I are going at it non-stop. Um, from lap 14 onwards or so. The first 14 laps were definitely for Silvasti. He definitely had the pace. But as soon as you get within that one second mark or so, you get the draft the whole time. Remember, these cars do not have DRS. It's a Formula Renault 2.0 uh, car. And I think this may be the final lap of the race. It's so what? No, wait, it's not. Uh, this is the penultimate lap of the race. So Vasti makes it, uh, an overtake again. Now that is not bad. Uh, knowing that this is the penultimate lap, if I stick with him now, maybe next lap I can overtake him again at the end of the straight. Then you don't have to make a mistake, which I somewhat did over there. So we'll stay, uh, we'll stay with us here a little bit, uh, coming to the end of the penultimate lap. Then, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, is it? Uh, I need to make some kind of lap counter to be honest uh, I'll do that for the next uh, video because we don't really know how far we're into this race apologies about that I'm also still trying to figure out a little bit what's going on here I think this is the last lap and um, somehow you've, you've got to compliment Silvasti here um, yes out of nowhere created a little bit of a gap probably a little bit too much pressure that I felt maybe uh, although I wouldn't really like to um, look for excuses on my part I think Sylvasti was uh, was having the upper hand in this race even though it was very very slight and then I thought in the final lap well it's all or nothing and I make a mistake and now that can happen um, the unfortunate thing though is we didn't have enough of a gap to Gunnar Nijenhaus who we are on board with now and he is going to overtake us as well so that is a little bit of a you know of a bummer because we drop from P2 now to P3 and again I make a mistake there um, just by thinking in the last lap, okay, all or nothing. But honestly, I couldn't care at this point. This race was, was so much fun for me. I had so much fun in this first race. And honestly, I did not expect myself to do this well. And knowing that I was able to do this well in the first round of the season already, it only gave me more confidence probably for the... Oh, for the rest of the season. What I'm doing in this video in these videos as well, I take three uh, races, three rounds, um, and put them into one video. So you'll see the first three rounds. We're currently at Watkins Glen. Next one is Donington, and the third one is I think Okayama. So we'll cover those three rounds in the uh, highlights videos. Uh, so every video that is being published, you'll see three rounds. The sprint race then. For the sprint race, the grid order is reversed. And immediately, well, you start a bit further back. That also means usually a little bit more KM. And yes, indeed, there was KM. Cars flying all over the place. We were lucky to get through there uh, safely. And on our left-hand side, I think we have uh, Knut Martinsen. I think most people will know him as uh, Fizi Fan, who is the absolute, uh, how would you call him, the CEO of Apex Online Racing, I guess. Um, I guess you guys know, uh, know the drill or get the drill. Um, but anyway, talking about the the, the uh, race order again of the sprint race, uh, Silvasti started one place behind me. Um, basically, the grid order gets reversed, but people who are being or who have been lapped in the feature race start behind the leader. If that makes any sense, the leader of or the the guy who finished in first in the feature race. So the grid order gets reversed. But the people who have been lapped start at the back and the people who DNF start at the back as well. So basically you have to finish on the lead lap to start in front of the guy who finished in first in the feature race. I hope that makes uh, a bit of sense. It's quite hard to explain sometimes. This whole point scoring system is, is, is quite insane to be honest because you can get one bonus point for a fast lap, one bonus point for a pole position, one bonus point for having a clean race as well. And what is being considered a clean race? Well considered a clean race is that you don't go off track once 
so that you stay within the track limits defined by iRacing, that you don't make any contact with your opponent and that you don't lose the car. So for example, in that last race I lost the car in the final lap, I lost control of the car and that meant that I get some incident points and immediately I don't have a shot at getting one extra bonus point then. That could get quite interesting towards the end of the season perhaps once it gets close and if it does get close because then you know mathematically it's going to be get very interesting. Currently cutting through the field um, like a um, knife goes through uh, some hot butter and that is good to see. Uh, currently I'm not entirely sure up to which position we are. Again I'm gonna have to work on the overlay that we have in the uh, in these series here. I just wanted to make sure that I got at least one video published this weekend and see what the response is like. Again going on the inside of a car, usually of course the um, the closer you get to the front of the field in these sprint races, the slower the cars are as well because the grid order has been reversed. So yeah, in theory if you can survive the first couple of laps and you have good pace then generally you can get into the top five relatively easy you get 25 minutes again in the sprint race there's no pit stop uh, you can take unlimited amount of fuel well not a limited amount of fuel but in the feature race the uh, fuel that you can carry is limited to 20 liters and in the sprint race you can go well above 20 liters so you know what there is no um, no risk of running out of fuel really in the sprint race unless you take uh, not enough fuel yourself as we're very close to running off track there again we're behind another car again I don't know who it is again I'm gonna work on the uh, overlay uh, for the next uh, next highlights I, I promise that if you have any kind of feedback other than you know the overlay needing some work then please leave a comment below in the comment section it's a little bit of a rough start really of this of these uh, of this series but that's because it's new for me it's new for the viewers and we all have to you know get used a little bit to what's happening here at apex online racing and i'm sure within you know uh within the next two videos already people know exactly the drill what's going on this league in this league um let's see look um white we just overtook um and he was in second place starting this lap or previous lap so that was lap eight or something like that so by the end of lap 7-ish, 8, we were already in P2 and we closed the gap to the leader. You can see we're driving on board now with the leader looking back at us and you get a huge draft down this stretch. So again, it shouldn't be too hard to, to overtake him. Sylvasti in the meantime is driving right there. I think that's him behind us. So Sylvasti is keeping up relatively nicely himself as well. We have just made a, a pass for the lead though. So that's good to see in the lead and it seems like we can win this sprint race coming from... What was it? It must have been P14, P15, 16-ish, I, uh, I would assume. Lap 15 of this race, this is the final uh, lap in the sprint race. We kept it relatively clean and cool, so that's nice to see. And uh, because you get uh, always a bonus point, you always try to go for a fast lap in this race, and you always try to have a clean race. I'm not entirely sure if I had a clean race here. I don't know if I went off track at any time. Um, Usually though, when you go off track once, you don't care about it anymore and you go off track many, many times. Now, you do have to be careful because in a feature race, when uh, once you reach 17 incident points, you get disqualified. In a sprint race, if you reach 13 incident points, you get disqualified. When you make contact, you can earn 4 incident points. Going off track is 1 incident point and losing control of the car is 2 incident points. So one week later a new track was on the calendar, Donington Park again qualifying in pole position, that's good, it gives you an extra bonus point if you finish at the end of the feature race, that's always nice. As the lights went out, I immediately had a good jump and took the lead coming into turn 1. One thing that should be mentioned is that Silvasti, remember the guy who we battled with massively in the first uh, first round in, the, in Watkins Glen, is absent or was absent from this race. And therefore, um, perhaps um, it was a little bit easier to drive in this race because, like I said before, um, before the actual season started, I got the, the message basically from people around me, look out for that Sylvasti guy. He has got plenty of experience in this car and he is uh, very, very quick. Might be a good challenger for you if you, get, uh, if you can get on the, on the space. Um, which was the case uh, at Watkins Glen, but again, I practiced a lot for Watkins Glen. I'm not gonna lie, I, it was my first round, so I wanted to start off uh, with, with, you know, with a bit of a high as well. Uh, in this first lap at Donington Park, though, like I said, 
not really enough any problems at the moment uh, sticking in uh, first place but there was a battle for second as we uh, have opened up lap two here um, but for us it was mainly you know the task of driving away from the field as as soon as possible really and get everyone outside of the draft outside of the slipstream by uh, lap 10 you can see here that was well, not really a problem the gap is uh, there to I think that must be Gunnar Nijenhuis or Christian Tekac uh, maybe Nijenhuis actually was behind us oh no it was Godin uh, Jean-Francois Godin I believe it was Godin that's how you pronounce his name I guess in French um, he was doing quite well in this race weekend so I think it must be him who's uh, currently behind me but not really any, any problems in this um, in this feature race at the, at the Lincoln Park and lap 25 we skipped 15 laps forward um, we seem to be stopping quite soon so again we're approaching the pit window that means we're about yeah, 25 minutes into the race is that right no that's about uh, 20 minutes into the race with 15 minutes to go on the on the clock no that's not right <laughs> 30 minutes into the race with 15 minutes on the clock there we go uh, my maths leaving uh, myself a little bit um, you know lost there um, anyway we're uh, in uh, the second round obviously and in between round one and two not a lot really happened I did quite a few races uh, at, at Donington Park on the so to say the, the iRacing schedule um, the, 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 uh, the official iRacing races, let's put them like that, the official iRacing races. See, it's a little bit hard for me to, to record videos like these because I'm not entirely sure what my audience is like. Um, people who are familiar with iRacing know exactly what I'm talking about. And people who don't know um, or who aren't familiar with iRacing have no clue what I'm talking about. Uh, pit stop going well though, there goes the lollipop man who, uh, you know, gives us the go sign. And we're outside of the uh, pit lane. We're joining in a bit of traffic perhaps at the start of lap 26. But that's not really a problem. People, people around me will most likely pit quite soon uh, as well. Um, like I said though, you have the official iRacing races. Basically iRacing itself changes its calendar as well every week. And the AOR um, league follows that calendar as well. The calendar is a total of 12 weeks I think. And therefore we will have 24 rounds, 12 sprint races, 12 feature races in AOR. Um, now obviously AOR is a league that was running at Friday night, but during the week you can do official iRacing races so to say. Um, uh, they are at the very same track that you drive on at, a at AOR. So I did a few races on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday even um, in build up to this race and um, that gave me a bit of experience as well. And uh, that was uh, not too bad. It was actually pretty nice. I didn't do many official races really outside of the AWAR league, but I know for this round I did quite a few actually. Uh, but I usually don't really do them. Um, my I rating is 4K. Uh, I think it could be a little bit higher to be honest, but I shouldn't really go that way because I simply don't drive that often in the. Uh, the official uh, races so to say crossing the line then no problems whatsoever in that feature race the cars behind were the cars who were lapped so remember the people who i have lapped will now start behind me in the sprint race where the grid order is reversed so um, the target um, while driving here at the end of the race was basically to lap as many people as possible because that's going to give me a place so for the sprint race then we started quite a way down the field Lap one of the race underway right now and as always at Watkins Glen we saw a bit of carnage. Let's see how it unfolds here. We're off to a somewhat okay start. Not really the best start ever though. As you can see they're pretty far down uh, the back of the grid and indeed there is an incident so we're going very very slowly here. Um, I forgot during the recording of the replay to set the maximum cars visible to something like 30. So um, you don't see the whole grid on your screen basically there were a few more cars behind us. Uh, so there we go, uh, that can happen. Luckily managed to uh, avoid all of the carnage that was going on in front of us. We'll have a look at the replay soon. And I think we're again behind uh, Knut Martinsen, uh, better known as, as Fizzy Fan. So in this uh, second sprint race you always want to uh, survive the first lap. That is, that is for sure. And um, again, I come from a league like FSR. And AOR is a step down in terms of driver's quality. I said it with all respect. But um, obviously I, I am new to, to iRacing, uh, relatively new, so 
you have to get, uh, or in my opinion, what I was thinking, you have to step into a league with a relatively low entry point, and AOR is fantastic for that. It, it really is fantastic. It's a lot of lot of fun to, to race in this league. The community is epic, but um, don't uh, expect the most competitive mindset from these guys. And honestly, you shouldn't expect that when coming into this league. That was a mistake that I made. Um, I expected a really professional attitude from all of the drivers, but you, you can't expect that from AOR. And that was a mistake that I that I made before. Um, Silvasti, for example, he has got quite a professional uh, mentality, absolutely. Um, but he is also a top driver. And as soon as you go a little bit further down to the grid, you know, the fun factor is uh, is the most important factor for for those guys. So here we see the crash. I was quite lucky that I was on the outside line for turn one. If I wasn't on the outside of line of turn one, you know, we could have been in a bit of carnage I think because on the inside there were really a few cars parked um, we're up to P3 at the end of lap 2 so this is lap 3 we have just started uh, up to P3 already that is uh, you know quite massive but there's a car that's not for position I think that must be a back mark or something is it yeah I think the top 2 you can see uh, into the distance um, Donington a relatively short track uh, but it is quite a fast track as well quite flowing corners it's typically typically the kind of track that I like uh, I don't like stop st or so what is it called stop start tracks start stop tracks how do you want to call them I like fast flowing tracks and this is definitely one of them the most tricky corner the one you're seeing on screen right now this one um, that one has a really blind apex you come up the hill and it's hard to get your turning point right um, these Formula Renault 2.0 cars, um, I found them relatively easy to drive. Um, the interesting thing though with this this car, in my opinion, what I felt like at least while practicing. Um, this is Nienhuis by the way, you're seeing on screen right now, he's in front of us uh, in P2. Um, the interesting thing I found with these cars is you have to somewhat approach them calmly. If you go over the limit uh, or drive really aggressively, push too hard however you want to call it as I make a mistake I make a mistake touching the sausage curb there we go and the chicane and that has cost me a reasonable amount of times there is no damage on the car I don't believe sometimes you do get it in high racing when you go over a big bump or whatever there is some damage done to the car but simply lost it there on the sausage curb that could have been a lack of concentration I'm not entirely sure what it was simply a driver mistake by me that was poor driving touching the inside curb there is something you should never do because there's a you know there's a big sausage curb obviously and when you touch it it unsettles the car massively there we go that's a bit better um, you want to get as close as possible to it of course but you don't want to touch it at all anyway starting lap 10 I believe here we're behind another car again I don't know who it is again apologies for that I will really try to fix it for the next round if someone knows like an overlay you can have within the iRacing replay itself then please let me know because that would save me so much work it's actually not that that easy to be honest and very time consuming to make an overlay yourself by uh, you know photoshop templates or whatever you want to do um, anyway we got by that car in uh, p2 so uh, in, yeah he was in p2 he's now p3 obviously uh, and we are in uh, second place but in the end i couldn't really you know get to first place at least that was my fault the gap seemed already too big and honestly it was just you know it was that mistake that i made in the final chicane i think i would have had a chance maybe to fight for p1 although i wouldn't really say anything negatively about the pace from Gunnar Nijnhuis at all we saw him driving there and here we are so there's still a reasonable gap try to close it down as much as I could it is Nijnhuis right these are back markers by the way uh, I think it is Nijnhuis I'm pretty sure or it is Godin but I'm pretty sure it is Gunnar Nijnhuis who is going to uh, take home the victory here and in between ourselves and Nijnhuis are two back markers we are there crossing the line so picking up P2 not too bad feature race first and sprint race second that's the other way around uh, of how it finished at Watkins Glen um, shouldn't really complain that concludes it then for the first two rounds of the Apex Online Racing iRacing Formula Renault 2.0 Championship I hope that you guys have enjoyed it the driver standings of the two rounds are on your screen right now we were leading the way 33 points ahead of nine house take a look at Silvasti who was in fourth place but obviously wasn't there for Donington Park so I'm sure that um, he will most likely be able to catch up again the point scoring system does allow that you can score plenty of points in one uh, round so to say 
and then uh, that means obviously you can easily catch up but that also means that you can easily extend the gap and that's what we'll be looking for obviously in the next round which is at Okayama and uh, round after that uh, which will feature also in the same video is Brent's Hatch uh, I believe I'm not entirely sure but I do believe so now one thing before we close this video off any kind of recommendations any kind of tips any kind of feedback is massively massively appreciated at this stage of the of the of the of the new series it's a little bit of getting used to for both you the viewer and for me the commentator and the editor uh, ed editor i have to get a little bit you know i have to feel the swing a little bit in order to make this a successful series i think and um, in order to make it a successful series as well in order to get that swing i need the um, feedback from you guys and uh, that would uh, again like i say uh, like i said massively help uh, last thing if you know any kind of system in iRacing that can record replays with uh, an overlay to it uh, that would be so so useful it would save me a lot of time uh, i don't know if it exists for iRacing but um, maybe some iRacing gurus are watching this video as well and know the answer to that so if there's any kind of replay overlay that that, uh, that there is for iRacing please do let me know and then uh, i think uh, we can make this a uh, very successful series Thank you for watching this video if you have enjoyed it i would sincerely appreciate a like like i said before feedback is very very much appreciated at this stage of the series take care of yourselves have a great day and i hope to see you next time goodbye